Rule number one, identify the system's constraints. Rule number two, exploit those constraints. Rule number three, subordinate everything to rule number two. Rule number four, elevate the system's constraints. And rule number five, if things aren't working, go back to rule number one. And important caveat, be sure that you don't get locked in and let inertia become its own constraint. Goldrot told us these rules via the team working for Alex Rogo in chapter 36, and he spends chapter 37 repeating these rules to us again. So the entire chapter is set at the, in the conference room at the production plant. It's the same cast of characters. It's Bob Donovan. It's Lou the controller. It's Stacy. Uh, it's Ralph Nakamura, uh, the data analyst. And they sit around and just like we had done in previous chapters and really since we've been doing in some flavor since chapter 32, since Frogo's promotion, we're going to keep repeating all the other things you could do that don't work. And we're going to talk about all the other management mantras you could do that don't work. And it's really as much a philosophical conversation. Some of what I think Goldrod is doing here is probably repeating for the reader all the persuading and arguing methods that he had to go through as he was developing the theory of constraints for himself mentally and with his team. But it seems like overkill at this point for the reader. If you've been through this and if it's something you've been living and working, uh, you, at this point you feel like you're getting hit over the head in the way that these topics are pushed again and again and again. There's going to be some payoff, though. Uh, chapter 38 is pretty cool in the way that he applies this. And again, you're, you're going to really love reading the actual book. Go read it. Go listen to it. Because every day that you work with the theory of constraints, you get the chance to make your own life and the world around you a little bit better.